celebrate uh, Trinity Sunday, the second Sunday after Pentecost. Blessed be God, the Father, the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for He has shown us His merciful love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and we shall be. Blessed be God the Father, and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for He has shown us His merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the Savior. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask this Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters. Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to a blessing life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of the world. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race the wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is a reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in the cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Song. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever, and blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. 
Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Our second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, and with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love, excuse me, and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To God who is, who was, and who is to come. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that, he, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I don't know any priest who would be overjoyed to see people back in church. I'm extremely glad to see you all here. Some of you were here last week. Uh, that was a whole kerfuffle, but we got that all straightened out. Uh, and the Lord saw fit to, uh, to sort that out with the uh, county. So, thanks be to Jesus for that. I had a request this weekend to preach on uh, the, the current situation with uh, looting and rioting and the death of George Floyd and all these different things. I was thinking about this. Uh, what, what should be said? Especially what should be said that has not already been said. But I'm not going to address it in the way that most have addressed it thus far. But I'm going to address it in the light of faith, especially given our readings today. We do have a real problem in the world today, and that is that we've got our priorities all jumbled basically beyond recognition. There's military acronyms for that. If you know them, you can think of them, but I won't mention that by name. We see in the first reading a great example from Moses. This really is, uh, I think, a message for all of us, especially that the world needs to hear, but all of us need to hear this. So what does Moses do? Moses says, early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Hopefully that's what we did this morning, got up early in the morning. Now you didn't come up Mount Sinai, but you came to Martinsville. But every morning, we should take this lesson from Moses. We get up right away, and we go up to Mount Sinai. Now, I don't expect you to get on a plane and fly over to Israel and go up to Mount Sinai. But we go up to the Lord. Right? 
We have to go up to the Lord. Moses begins his day by rising and going before the Lord God, encountering the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded him. So he starts his day in prayer with the Lord. What if everybody in the world did that? What if they got up every morning, they got down on their knees, and they spoke to the Lord? They went into the Lord's presence. What else does he do? He takes the two stone tablets with him. On those tablets are written the Ten Commandments. So he, from the beginning of his day, he gets up, goes to the Lord, and takes with him the commandments. What if everybody did that? They got up every day, went to the Lord in prayer, and held close to them the commandments. Tried to live their life by the commandments. What a different world we live in. Now, the Lord sees Moses who comes to the mountain to pray. And the Lord stands with Moses there and proclaims his name. Now, first of all, I had to sort out uh, I had to sort out who was speaking here. It's a little confusing. It took me about three times to read this and figure out exactly what's going on. It says, Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name. Now, the Lord is proclaiming his name, Lord. He's revealing himself to Moses. And then he says, the Lord, that is, thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. So the Lord is saying that to Moses. It's important that when we go to prayer, we don't just tell the Lord the things that we think he should hear from us. But primarily, our prayer should be listening to the Lord. Lord, what do you have to speak to me? You want to reveal yourself to me anew. Moses needs to hear the Lord telling him, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. The Lord doesn't come to smite Moses. He sees that Moses wants to be close to him. And so he reveals himself to Moses in a new way, in a more profound way. He renews what he has already revealed to Moses. He says it again. I am the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. The Lord wants to remind Moses of how much he loves him. He cares for him and the whole people of Israel. What does Moses do? Moses receives that message from the Lord, bows down at once to the ground in worship, and then says to the Lord, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. Lord, be with us on our journey. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. Lord, we stray from you. We struggle to follow you. Yet in your mercy, pardon us from our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own, that we would be your people. What if this was happening every day, even just in the lives of those who believe, yet alone the multitude of people who have not yet been invited to follow the Lord? That's the revolution that the world needs. We do need to straighten out our priorities. Things do need to change in this world. But it has very little to do with the structures in our society, or the police, or the people who are looting or rioting, and those things. They, we all have to have a revolution of prayer, committing to be in the presence of the Lord, to turn to Him, to love Him, because when we turn to the Lord in prayer and we love the Lord, we see that the Lord first has loved us. And if He loves us, He loves every single person He made. And because He loves every single person He made, when we encounter any other person, even if they're acting inappropriately, even if they're acting wrongly, we know that the Lord loves them. And He loves us. And therefore, we have to love them. Because if the Lord loves them, and we also, who know the Lord's love, have to show that love to others. It doesn't mean that we 
let them off the hook for things that they've done on any side of that whole equation, wherever, it, wherever someone falls. But think about that. If we all went out and tried to encounter every single person we meet every day, having first received the love of the Lord anew in our hearts every morning, and we're striving to live the commandments, the world would be a very different place. All of these inequalities and injustices, all those things would fade away. The people who feel very wronged would be heard, could be invited to something much deeper. People who are doing the wronging, whoever they may be, can be called to conversion. All of us need that revolution of love. It starts with our prayer and living the commandments. So, I'm not going to get into the political issues because it really, this really isn't a political issue when you break it all down to its basic problem. Basic problem. The basic problem is that we don't first come to the Lord and then strive to love each other. We seek worldly ways, we are selfish, we sin, we stray from the Lord, we generally are not, as a society, concerned with coming back to Him. And that's really the problem. So if we're going to change anything in this world, it begins with coming before the Lord every day in prayer, acknowledging His presence, and seeking to live the commandments, primarily the commandment to love God and to love as <coughs> ourselves.
God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to look with mercy on these and all our prayers. We ask you to look on them with your mercy to receive them, especially those that lie in the silence of our hearts. We also ask St. Michael's intercession that we would be protected as we travel about the paths of this life, life and see you, seek you always anew. We ask his intercession as we pray. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protected against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into the well of Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the worlds, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Broke the bread 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I be with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant you peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Since your children of God, God has sent into your hearts the Spirit of the Son, the Spirit who cries out to the Father and the Father. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Since you are children of God, God has sent into your hearts the Spirit of the Son, the Spirit who cries out to the Father.
Let us pray. We are receiving this sacrament, O oh Lord our God. Bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided union. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank all of you for having the courage and fortitude to come out. I appreciate seeing all of you in Mass. It gives me a lot of a hope and joy to see you and talk to a, a number of my brother priests who are very excited to have the faithful back in Mass. So it's been as hard as it's been, it's been on you, it's been hard on us priests as well. So thank you very much for joining in prayer in the church. Uh, just want to encourage all of you uh, to uh, keep reaching out to your neighbors and friends, let them know what's going on in the parish. There's bulletins back there if you want to take some extras for your uh, neighbors who maybe they weren't able to come to Mass this weekend, uh, feel free to do that. Uh, if you uh, have your uh, auditory, please uh, put that in the back, in the box in the back, uh, just either when you come in or go out, uh, we'll be taking up the collection in the normal manner, uh, so please do continue to support the parish. And uh, if there's anybody on the, the live stream, this will be posted after 